Hi, I'm Beth. I'm George. It's a pleasure to be on Free Speech Television. As filmmakers, we, uh, we look for subject matter that we're curious about, that is a compelling story, but always with a compelling subject, a person. Because um, the kind of films that George and I make aren't just about a subject, you know, whether it be uh, fracking or dam removal or, uh, you know, different environmental or social justice causes. We like to bring people into the story by telling someone else's story. So I would say in, in, in the case of the dams, I read about what they had been going through in the New York Times and was really curious about why the government would be um, would be harassing these two elderly Western Shoshone ranching uh, sisters in the desert. And so we thought we'd you know, try and find out more about it. So I called the uh, author from the New York Times and talked to him and what he did is that he gave me a lead of their attorney who was working out in Elko, Nevada at Pro Bono on their case. And I called up Julie Fischel, who ended up being a friend and ended up being in the film. And Julie said, you know, honestly, George, there's been a couple of films done already 30 years ago on the dance, and they're a little gun shy. They're a little bit uh, nervous about doing another film. I don't think that they were tr treated maybe perfectly. Uh, and I think the, they're very personal people. And I think the best thing you could do is really go out there, sit down with them without cameras, get to know them a little bit, and let them get to know you a little bit and maybe leave them a couple examples, they're very intelligent, of people, of films you've done in the past. And that's what we did. We drove out to Crescent Valley, Nevada, and we met with them in their kitchen. We talked for a couple of hours, no cameras. Julie was with us. We left them some films. And then uh, Julie called about a week later and said, they've looked at your films and they've considered, you know, what you guys are like in, in the meet and greet that you did and they've given the okay to do the film. Now, when I say given the okay, we're not getting paid by anybody to do this film. We're digging into our own pockets, because as Beth says, we'd like to tell a very big story through a very personal way. And the Dan seemed to be very great personalities. When, um, when I saw the articles in the New York Times about Carrie and Mary Dan, uh, and after, I think there were about three or four articles, and then I brought them to George's attention and said, you know, we ought to do something about this. This, this would make a great film subject. And so he said, well, I'll call the New York Times writer and see, you know, see uh, how we get in touch with these women. And the writer was a man named Charlie LaDuff. And um, so he put us in touch with Julie Fischel, who is the lawyer George was talking about. And, you know, that got us on the, uh, sort of on the, on the wagon going towards uh, this story out in Nevada. About three weeks ago, I got a call from Charlie LaDuff. Charlie LaDuff, the, the reporter from the New York Times, is now working independently, but he's affiliated with Fox in Detroit. And he is, is, was doing a story on um, Clive and Bundy. And he, he remembered um, that, that, you know, we had done this film about uh, the dance sisters, so he got in touch with us. He didn't realize that the reason we had done the film on the dance sisters was that he had written the article about, about them. But anyway, it, he called us to say how, how outrageous he sort of thought it was that they were getting all this attention, or for he was getting all this attention, Clive and Bundy. And, you know, Carrie and Mary really didn't get very much attention. You know, there are people that are in the activist circles that know, know a lot about Carrie and have supported her for years. But, you know, in the greater media, it, you, you wouldn't really hear about them. And meanwhile, Clive and Bundy was all over the place. And the, the sort of interesting thing was, even though he was working for Fox, he thought that the, the true story that had real merit was being overlooked, and that was Carrie and Mary Dan, and their claim to the land. Dan sisters, it's not about money at all. In fact, if they wanted to, they could sell this ranch that was homesteaded by their father for millions of dollars to the gold miners that they wanted to sell out. It's all about, as you said, the connection to the land of the earth. They get their spirituality, they get their 
feeling they get. They get so much from the earth. I can never remember. I remember sitting with Carrie one day out in the field, and you know she was feeling the spirits and so forth. And then we got into a more mundane conversation where she was mentioning just in around us there were like 78 different identifiable kinds of grasses, and she knew all those different kinds of grasses. And of course, Carrie's deep belief. That everything has a living, living spirit, whether it be a seed, whether it be a twig, whether it be a tree, and uh, I think that we, as filmmakers, learned an awful lot about American, uh, Native American uh, spirituality, Native American stewardship of the land, sustainability of the land, love of the land, and it just seems in absolute contrast to what's going on with the. Uh, Mr. Bundy. You know, um, originally our film, American Outrage, was called Our Land, Our Life. And that was um, the title that we came up with just because uh, of spending time with Carrie and Mary on the land. Because basically, to them, their land is their life and was their life. And um, they, they never really, all they really wanted to do was make a living on their land. They own, you know, a big ranch or small by western standards but big by eastern standards i guess it's uh, i think it's 800 acres something yes, like that yes. and um but they you know they graze outside it and that's what the issue is both with bundy and with the dance and the dance have a treaty to that land they have a treaty that we, we filmed it we filmed in you know in washington dc it has never been abrogated and even so even though they have a treaty to the land they were always willing to share the land. All they wanted was the ability to use the land in the way that it would sustain them. And everything that they did, they were thankful for. And um, we went out one day with them just picking um, pine, nuts, pine, nuts, pine, nuts. pine nuts. And they first do a whole ceremony before they gather the pine nuts. When they, anything they do, they burn sage or tobacco, they do a ceremony. They, everything that they do, um, they thank the, the Creator, the Great Spirit, for what has been given to them. And, you know, they were treated so sort of roughly by the government and so by the book, by, by the government's book. Whereas, you know, Clive and Bundy has been, in, you know, in, indulged in his, in his kind of crazy ideas. And, the land that he is saying is his land, or he has every right to have, is is was Native American land, and these people really, um, it, it means so much to them. I mean, it's where their creation stories take place. It is what their life is all about, and to rip them off this land is really a very cruel thing. And they're, you know, they aren't trying to get rich. They were just trying to to uh, make a living. I talk a lot about sensationalism and how so many networks and so many uh, distributors and so many uh, venues where you might show your film are always looking for sensationalism. Like when we did the movie Troubled Waters, a lot of people uh, at larger networks said to us, well, is there any disaster in it? Like did a dam overflow and maybe wipe out of town and kill people? That's what, I, that's what would really get that's what really get people to watch it, you know. And with the Dan sisters, when you think about it, the fact that, that the United States government, the BLM, came in in helicopters, manhandled 70-year-old women, threw them around like they were prize fighters, then stole their cattle, and then let their cattle die, let like, like hundreds of horses just die out in the middle of a field, which I photographed. I got there to photograph it. Where was the national media? If they want sensationalism, that's sensationalism. And it also points a real fault in the way our government is operating right now. The other thing um, that I'd like to say to, you know, uh, to the free speech viewers is that the films that we make, we make because these people um, inspire us. And we hope that the films will inspire viewers and perhaps motivate them to to work for uh, change in our in our country, in our states, and in, in our world, because we definitely have some issues that need attending to, and uh, we hope that we can motivate people with these films. So.
And even though free speech television may be relatively small, they give filmmakers a platform to air films that maybe are a controversy or maybe don't have the happiest endings in the world, but are really important films. Thank you very much for watching the film. We hope you appreciate it, and uh, we hope you appreciate uh, seeing this film on free speech TV. And I think it will give you a better understanding of the first people here in the United States and some of their views and some of their spirituality. I know that Beth and I learned a lot about Mother Earth working with Carrie and Mary Dan.